So. Um, all right, thanks for coming, guys. This is the mystifying Drupal Ajax callback commands. Uh, so I, I like to start my sessions out by going over the goals, so that way you know if this session is, is for you, and if it's not, you have a chance to go to another session. So I have three goals for this uh, session. The first one is to explain what the Ajax callback commands are, so how Drupal uses them and what they're composed of. I'm going to demonstrate how to use Ajax callback commands. We'll go over... Um, a real-world situation, well, not real-world, but a likely situation, and we'll go through how to use uh, Ajax commands to build out the functionality we're looking for, and then outline how to create your own Ajax callback commands um, so that you know how you can extend it and get the functionality that you want. And I'm going to be covering these cases in both Drupal 7 and Drupal 8, um, so there's something for everybody. With that, just a little bit about myself. My name is Michael Miles. I'm from Boston, Massachusetts. Go Red Sox. No Yankees fans. I would have got a much different response. Uh, I work as the associate director of PHP for a company called Genuine. Um, we're a full service digital agency, which means we do a lot more than development. Um, I help lead up the, the PHP team. We also do .NET and front end and then design and SEO and video production and all this cool stuff. And I have stickers. I had to put that in there so I'd remember to say that. So feel free to take a sticker. Um, we have offices in Boston, Chicago, San Francisco, and here in New York, just a couple blocks down the street. I think. I've actually never been to the New York office. I've been working with Drupal since 2008, and I've done everything from adding content to a brochureware website to architecting and deploying large-scale global platforms. I'm Acquia certified, and I was named 2014 Acquia MVP. Um, I don't really think that means too much, but it's a good selling point for, for it. So. If you want to know any more about me, you can find me on Twitter at MikeMiles86, on Drupal.org and the RC channels at MikeMiles86, and all the places on the internet, MikeMiles86 is usually my handle. And I just have a slight warning about example code. Yes, there is example code in this presentation. Um, there's not too much, just enough to get points across. I've ignored some coding standards for presentation purposes so that the code fits in the slides. So if you take my example code from this presentation and you put it into Coder, it's going to yell at you. Um, but I have a link to the example code that meets standards and has a lot more comments at the end. And then any Drupal 8 code I show, still subject to change the standard Drupal 8 warning since it's in beta. But the stuff we're going to be talking about is pretty much in core, and it's a core component, so it shouldn't change too much. Man, I wish it was brighter so you could see my great gifts. That's right. All right, so what are Ajax callback commands? Let's go over the high level, um, and then we'll talk about what each one's made up of from uh, client-side code and server-side code. So from a high level, all Ajax callback commands are are the responses that are returned from an Ajax request. So we have the Ajax framework in Drupal 7 and Drupal 8 that handles all Ajax functionality for a Drupal site. It makes an Ajax request to the server, and the server is building an array of commands, and these commands are being sent back to the client, and the client is executing JavaScript functionality. So their commands are basically PHP code that instructs JavaScript functions. There's a server-side component that builds um, basically a JSON object, which says, all right, client-side code, run these JavaScript functions, and here's the data to send each one. And the JavaScript functions themselves, they're attached to a global uh, JavaScript object provided by the Ajax framework. Uh, if, you, if you know about like Drupal behaviors, that's a global object. Same thing, there's a global uh, Ajax commands object, which we'll get into. And then the commands are defined by Drupal core or by additional modules, such as use and see tools defines commands. In Drupal 7, there are 17 core Ajax callback commands provided. In Drupal 8, there are 22. So we, we've gained a couple more. So let's take an example. Zoom in. Where's my mouse? So in this example, uh, this is using the examples module. We check a checkbox, and it makes the Ajax request, sends back the command to remove text. So there's the text to be removed. And we check it. Ajax request, text is removed. Very basic example. Let's take a look to see what's going on under the hood. So on the client side of a command in Drupal 7, it's just a function attached to the drupal.ajax.prototype.commands object. And this function, any command that's attached to this object, receives three arguments. 
AJAX, which contains information about the AJAX request, the element that was triggering the AJAX request, the element that's going to be manipulated. The response argument, which contains data that was sent back from the response to the server, so any data to be populated on the page or um, being sent to this function to be used. And then a status argument, oh, I went too far. And a status argument that is like the status of the page, so 404, 500, 200, hopefully not 404. But. And all these functions are, all these commands are on the client side are just wrappers for additional JavaScript. So they're a way to simplify additional JavaScript functionality. Now here is our, here is the uh, remove command provided by Drupal core. So we have the Drupal object on line two, and here on line seven, it's defining the remove function that takes our three arguments. And it has this function because Drupal wants to do a little more than just call the jQuery remove. It wants to make sure it removes behaviors from any of the selectors it's going to take out. Now the server side of Drupal 7 for HS callback commands, all it is is a PHP function which returns an associative array. And all that array has to have is an element with the key of command. And this element, this value, is equal to the JavaScript function name on the client side. And then it can have additional array elements, and those are what send the response data to that function. So here we have the Ajax command, uh, sorry, the, uh, the Drupal callback Ajax command remove on the server side. So it's a function provided by Drupal called Ajax command remove, and all it returns is this really basic associative array, where all it needs is the command of remove, which maps to the function attached to the object in JavaScript. And then pass the C it passes the CSS selector to know what object to remove. Really basic on the, on the server side and really basic on the client side. Yeah, so that's what uh, Ajax commands are. They are what are returned from a Ajax request on the Client side, they are a JavaScript function attached to a global JavaScript object that takes in three arguments. And then on the PHP side, on the server side, they're just a function uh, that returns an associative array that has the element of key uh, command and tells what JavaScript command to run. Surprisingly simple um, setup. So how do we use these HS callback commands? Why would you want to use them and how would you use them? I think it's, it's best if we use an example scenario so you guys have something in your head and I'm just not showing you code after code after code. So here's my example scenario that's kind of like a user story. Uh, as a user, when I navigate to the My Messages page, then I see a list of my unread messages and I see a list of my read messages. When I click on an unread message, then the full message is retrieved from the server and I see the content of my message and the message is removed from the unread, message, unread messages list to the message, in the messages added to the red messages list. And so you guys can see what we're doing. Here it is. Look out, uh, Blue Drop Rewards. Um, I'm just clicking the title of my message. It's being retrieved from the server and being displayed in the center area here. And then the title is moving from unread to red messages. So we're going to implement this using Ajax callback commands. I just love this. I think this is awesome. All right. Uh, what, what did I just do? There we go. So to use commands, there are three steps that you have to follow. The first step is to make sure you include the Drupal Ajax library um, on the page that's going to be making Ajax requests. The second step is to make sure you have Ajax attached to page elements so that they can trigger Ajax requests. Um, the Ajax framework provides many different ways to attach Ajax elements. I'm not going to go in too deep in this talk about that. That could be its own session. Um, it, it probably is. Uh, there, but there's great documentation online about that. And then on the server side, to use a command, you have to define a callback path and a callback function. So the path is the menu path that the AJAX request is being made to, and the function is the server side code that is essentially just going to return a render array of commands. So using our example scenario, if we look at adding the Drupal Ajax library to our page. We have this function here called my module messages page, everyone's favorite module. Um, on line four, I'm adding the Drupal Ajax library using Drupal add library. 
Then I'm just building my list of unread messages and empty div to hold my current message and the list of uh, messages I've read. That's not important for this. What is important is that I'm including the Ajax library so I can prep my page to use Ajax functionality. Next, I am making sure I'm attaching Ajax to page elements. So this is the function module list, which is building uh, my list of messages. The important part of this code is lines six through nine. So I'm calling the link function to build a link with the with the uh, displaying the message subject, calling my callback path, which I'll explain in a moment. And then the important part is so that the Ajax framework knows my link should be making an Ajax request, I'm adding a class to my link called use Ajax. So when the DOM loads and everything loads on the page, the Ajax framework is going to find all links that say use Ajax, and it's going to know to send an Ajax request and not just make it do what it does and redirect the user to another page. Now the first part of my third step is I have to define a callback path. So I have my menu hook, and you see I have two menu links. The first one is read message callback node.js and read message callback Ajax. So this is part of graceful degradation. Um, it's your responsibility as a developer to make sure if someone reaches your menu path, um, your callback, not using Ajax or not using JavaScript, that it gracefully degrades and that they can still get the functionality that you're looking for. So here I'm just defining um, a, a callback function to be run. Now for the Ajax version, I'm changing the delivery callbacks to tell Drupal, deliver this content that you get from my callback as Ajax, and that will package up um, my commands into a JSON object to send to the client. Now the way these two paths are reached, if we look at our previous example, I'm just making the link go to the Node.js one. So when the Ajax framework um, sends this link, this path, makes a call to this path, before it does so, it replaces the word Node.js with the word Ajax. So that in my callback function, I can test to see if it's from Ajax or by Node.js. And I'm doing, I'm, ah. and I'm doing that um, by passing it, you know, the page arguments. So the first one is what method is being sent. And the second part of it, I have to make sure I have a callback function that returns a render array of commands. So here I have my callback function that my menu path is being called, and I'm building this array of commands here. And these are the AJAX commands. Uh, that are provided by Drupal Core. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm calling the HTML command, which will tell the JavaScript to call the jQuery HTML function. I'm passing it a selector in my message subject. I'm t using the HTML command again to replace the body of the current message on the page. I'm calling the remove command, which we looked at when we were exploring what commands are, uh, to remove my message from the unread messages list. And then I'm using the append command uh, to add my message subject to the red messages list. So all these functions here are, they build those associative arrays that have the command to say, run the HTML command, run the remove command, run the append command in JavaScript. And now on lines 14 through, 17 through 19, I am building a, a, a render array that then the Ajax render callback or delivery will know to package up into JSON. So it's of type Ajax, and it has the argument of commands, which is my array of commands. So that's, that's it. That's all you have to do to use callback commands. You have to make sure you include the Ajax library on your page. You have to make sure you have Ajax attached to elements on your page. Then on the server side, make sure you have a menu callback with graceful degradate, degradate, graceful han, han, gracefully handles non-JavaScript. Um, and then you have a callback function in Drupal 7 which returns a render array of the commands to use. Let's talk about creating custom commands. Because Drupal 7 and Drupal 8 provide great uh, commands, so do additional modules, but you may want to build your own commands to do way more JavaScript. So to create a command, there are two steps you have to follow. Step one, <coughs> You have to add a function to the Drupal Ajax command JavaScript object. Just like how the core commands like remove is added to that object, you have to add your additional function to that object. And then on the server side, you have to write PHP code that returns an associative array. 
Does anyone remember from the example of the remove command, what does this associative array have to have? Yeah, well, it has to have an element with the key of command. And the value of that key has to be the name of the JavaScript function to run. So in case of creating a custom command, whatever you call your JavaScript function is what you're going to return as the command from your associative array on the PHP side. And then you return any additional elements that are going to be used as a response data. So that's all. That's all you have to do is those two steps to create a custom command. Two very basic functions, one on the JavaScript side and one on the PHP side. So to demonstrate this, in Drupal 7, what you would do is you would add a function to drupal.ajax.prototype.commands. And then you would define a PHP function to return an array that has that uh, command element. So if we go back to our uh, messages example, our scenario, I want to use my own custom uh, AJAX callback. So I attach to the commands object uh, a read message function, which retrieves, receives my three arguments. And now all I'm doing inside this, this function here is I'm calling the jQuery HTML uh, function, the jQuery remove function, and the jQuery append function. So what we were doing with the core commands on the server side we're now doing with the core jQuery functions on the client side. And I put this in a JavaScript file of my module. And then on the PHP side, I'm defining a PHP function that returns an associative array. So I call my function, my module command read message. It receives an uh, argument of a message object. And I just return this basic array, where I say the command to run on the JavaScript side is read message. And I pass the message ID, the message subject, and the message content. Which if we go back to JavaScript, we can see I'm using the subject, the response content, and the, the uh, response ID. Great, you can create a custom command with two steps, with a JavaScript function and a PHP function. Let's talk about using a custom command. First thing you have to do is make sure you tell Drupal to include your JavaScript file on the page. If Drupal doesn't know about your JavaScript, it's not gonna know about your command. And then on the server side, make sure your custom command is being returned in a callback function. If it's not being returned, it's not going to be used. That's it. Just two steps again. Really simple to use your custom command. So in Drupal 7, for using a custom command, first we're going to add our JavaScript to our page using something like Drupal add JS. And we're going to make sure that our command is added to the render array being returned by our callback. So our, we have our oh, I was already zoomed in. We have our my module message page. This function again was building that uh, page with two lists in the empty div. I've commented that out. And if you remember, before I talked about adding the Drupal Ajax library, we're doing that still on line four, but now on line six, I'm adding my custom JavaScript. So when the page loads, the Ajax library is loaded, and then my command is added to the object provided by it. And now in my callback function that we saw, instead of building uh, an array of like four commands, I'm calling my one custom command. Uh, which will send that uh, associative array to build the JSON object to be sent to the client, and it'll run my JavaScript function. So I've really condensed this and made it easier on myself. That's how you create and use custom commands. Really simple. Uh, for creating them, make sure you add a JavaScript function to the global object. On the server side, make sure you have a function that returns an associative array that has the element of command with the value of the, with the name of the JavaScript function to run. And then to use it, make sure your JavaScript is being added to the page uh, and that your command is being used in a callback function. All this stuff is surprisingly simple. Uh, all right, let's talk about Ajax commands in Drupal 8. Um, relatively the same. There's been some changes. Uh, thanks to Symfony 2, a lot of this has become object-oriented. But it's not that it's not that bad, um, so don't be afraid of it. We'll go through what has changed and how it's still really simple to use. So the first thing, what's changed with Ajax callback commands in Drupal eight? The first thing is now in core we have twenty two callback commands. In Drupal seven we had seventeen. We've pulled in some 
uh, modules into core, so we have 22 available, plus all the other modules that define commands. Commands are attached to a different JavaScript object. It's the same object as a different name. It's now called drupal.ajaxcommands.prototype. And on the server side, a command is no longer a function. It's a PHP object that implements command interface. Um, if you guys are a little fuzzy about what interfaces are, you can think of them as a contract for code. So any class or any object that implements command interface is promising that it will have certain methods as part of it, or else you'll get a big warning. The method that has to be attached to an object that implements command interface is the render method. And all the render method does is exactly what the Drupal 7 version would do, returns an associative array. So if you remember our core example of the remove command, where the examples module shows up, demonstrates that when we check the checkbox, it removes the text. That can be magic. Um, what's going on in Drupal 8 side now with this core command? Well, it's a function attached to the, proto the new object. You see the remove command here. Pretty much the same thing it's doing in Drupal 7. It's making sure to remove behaviors from the um, selector that's going to remove from the page, and then it's calling the jQuery remove command. Still takes the same arguments as it would in Drupal 7. Now in Drupal 8, on the server side, the command uh, is an object that implements command interface, and it must implement the render method. So here we have the remove command as provided by Drupal 8. So you'll see now it's a class that's called remove command, and it implements the command interface, and it has a it implements the render function, uh, the render method. But all that's doing is returning the same array that the Drupal 7 version does, where it's the command of remove and the CSS selector. So it's not that bad of object-oriented if you're not used to object-oriented code. It's, it's pretty simple, and you can use the core commands as examples. Um, so to use, to use commands in Drupal 8, in Drupal 7 there were only two steps you had to follow, and oh, there are three steps. There are still three steps. Um, Step one, make sure you're including the Drupal Ajax library. Now in Drupal 8 though, you have to attach it to a render array. Gone is the, add, the Drupal add JS uh, function. So the preferred method is to attach uh, JavaScript libraries to renders array, render arrays. You still attach uh, uh, Ajax to page elements. Um, I believe the Ajax framework works about the same, the same type of methods. Uh, and then you have to define a callback path and function like you would in Drupal 7, except your callback function does not return a render array. It's going to return an Ajax response object. And this object uh, has a couple of methods attached to it. The one you're going to be concerned about is add command, which we'll go through. So we have our lovely scenario again, the same, same functionality where we have this list of messages that we retrieve from the server and we display and the title moves from unread to read messages. Now if we are going to implement this in Drupal 8, we have to make sure we attach the library to a render array. So we have our message, we have the message page uh, function that we've had where we build our content. Now we're making it a render array. A render array. Um, and we're attaching the, job, the Drupal Ajax library to the attached library um, part of the render array. So you see library is array itself because you can attach multiple libraries. And then we're just rendering this and Drupal will know to include that JavaScript library. And now this is our callback function written for Drupal 8. It, it's pretty similar to the Drupal 7 version, except we're making an eight, we're creating an Ajax response on line six. And then we're adding a command to that object uh, and we're calling the HTML command because now it's an object itself. It's not a function again. Adding HTML, adding HTML, calling the remove command, calling the append command. Same thing we're doing in Drupal 7, now it's just a little more object oriented. Or I guess now it is object oriented. And we return our response, to serve, Drupal builds that into a JSON object, sends it to a client, and it does what it does. Now, you, uh, custom commands in Drupal 8, you're attaching your JavaScript function to the new or the renamed. Uh, JavaScript object, Drupal.ajaxcommands.prototype. 
you are defining a command object that implements can command interface on the server side. So you're not writing a function, you're implementing a command. Um, and if I'm implementing the command interface, what method do I have to make sure my class has in it? Render. Render, yeah. That's all you have to have. So let's take a look at this. Um, I'm building my read message command now in Drupal 8. It looks it pretty much exactly the same on the client side for Drupal 8. I just attach it to a different object. This jQuery is exactly the same. And then now I'm defining a command object that implements the command interface with my uh, render method. So I put this in the file read message command.php uh, in my module. And I just define this render method. I pass it the command of read message, which maps to that JavaScript function and the uh, response data I want to send along. I also have a constructor to take in a message object. That's not important for this example. So to use this custom command in Drupal 8, in Drupal 7, there are two steps. Make sure your JavaScript was included on the page. Make sure you're using your, your, um, new call, your new command in your callback. There are three steps in Drupal 8. First thing you have to do is you have to tell Drupal about your custom JavaScript library. So Drupal knows that you have um, uh, JavaScript to add. Then you have to attach your library to the render array, and just like we did with the Ajax framework uh, JavaScript library. We have to have to add our library to the page. And then on the server side, you're adding your command to the Ajax response object in your callback. So step one is tell Drupal about your custom JavaScript library. You do this with a libraries.yaml file. Um, I'm not an expert on this, so I'm going to do my best to explain what you include in it. First thing, you have to give your library a name. I think it's called an asset library name. So I call mine module.commands. Then you tell Drupal uh, what JavaScript files to include. On lines three and four, I'm telling it to include my commands.js file. And then you can tell Drupal what dependencies your library depends on. So I'm saying my library depends on the Drupal Ajax library. So now Drupal will know that if it's going to load my library on the page, it has to load the Ajax library as well. So I attach my library to my render array. So we have our message page function again to build that page of messages. And you'll see instead of adding the Drupal Ajax library, I'm adding my custom library. And when Drupal loads the page, it's going to load my library. And then from my library's file, it knows it has to load the Ajax library as well. And then um, in my callback, I have to use my new command in my Ajax response. So I have my callback function, and all I'm doing is adding my new custom command, my read message command. That's it. Bazinga. Easy to do. So those are the changes in Drupal 8. So let's review. Everything I've covered, um, I think everything was surprisingly basic, and so I got through a lot, and so it's, it's hard to remember how easy some stuff is. So Ajax callback commands, what are they? They are what is returned by all Ajax framework Ajax requests. So any request made through Ajax, it's basically returning an array of commands of JavaScript functions to run. You can think of Ajax callbacks as PHP abstraction for JavaScript functions. So you have a server side, code that returns a render array, uh, not render, array, associative array that tells it what JavaScript function to run, and that JavaScript function is attached to the global JavaScript object. And then commands are either defined by Drupal core or by Drupal modules. To use an Ajax callback command, you want to make sure you're including the Drupal Ajax library onto your page. You want to attach Ajax to different page elements so that Ajax requests are triggered. And then you want to have server-side code that takes in that callback and it essentially returns an array of commands. To create a custom Ajax callback command, you want to make sure you're adding your command, uh, your Ajax command to the JavaScript object. You want to make sure you're writing PHP code that returns an associative array that has the key of command with the value being the name of your JavaScript function. And that's all you have to do. And then to use your custom Ajax commands, make sure your custom JavaScript is being included on the page. If it's for Drupal 8, you have to make sure you tell Drupal about your JavaScript library. 
And then make sure you use your custom command in an Ajax, in a callback. So that's everything I talked about. I hope it was pretty clear. Um, so I have this nice list of resources for you guys. Um, I'll bring the slide back up after I take it off. First one is the documentation on the Ajax framework, so you can learn how to use the Ajax framework and how to attach Ajax events to elements on the page. I have a link to the examples module, which is a module which provides examples of all the core API functions, including all the Ajax commands provided by Drupal Core. A link to the documentation for the 17 core Drupal 7 Ajax commands. A link to documentation for the 22 core Drupal 8 commands. A link to this presentation, so you can go through it yourself. A link to this, the slides for this presentation. And then the example code that I used in this presentation, which has a lot more, I provide a lot more comments on it so you understand what's going on and you can see it all together. Um, if you guys can send me feedback on the session, I'd really appreciate it. A fee, uh, session, in my mind, is always a work in progress. Um, so any feedback on how I can make it better, uh, or if you saw a spelling mistake or something, please let me know. And that's all I have. I want to thank you guys for coming. Questions, I already saw some hands, which is great. So I welcome questions, and we have time for it, but I'm going to put up the resources slide while I answer them. Questions? So how do you go about debugging? Let's say, this may or may not be a Drupal cluster. Mm -hmm. It may just be generic Ajax, I don't know. But in, in, your, in your canonical example of the, the messages, let's say I click on a message that's unread, and it's not moving over to the red column. How do you go about debugging where the stack is breaking down? Um, there are probably a number of ways you could do it. Uh, purely on a JavaScript side, you could probably use something like uh, console log, just put in console logs and check. Um, you could also, if you have your environment set up to do like xdebug on your callback function on the server side, you could add, um, what are they called? Breakpoints. Breakpoints, thank you, yeah. You could add breakpoints um, so that you can see if your code is actually being triggered. Um, I would say those two methods, probably where I would do first. I knew they're kind of dirty, but that's how I would do it first. Do right you might you might have missed my first slide, um, but maybe maybe because you probably know a lot more about this subject than I do. But let me just reiterate: is that I've ignored some reporting standards for the presentation. Okay. But yes, I'm accepting by reports. Okay, two in particular I want to call out. That's okay. Uh, under Drupal eight samples. Uh huh. Uh, to be uh, escape. Which part you want to talk about? Um, yeah, that one. This one? Yeah. Or building the render? Um, so, first of all, I hope no one actually makes uh, functions as their controllers in Drupal 8. They normally work, that's just your documentation. Yeah, I didn't change that part for this example because I only wanted to concentrate. Yeah. And the even bigger one, the default Drupal service render at the end, um, that is a 50 50 chance of being a, a uh, fatal exception now in Drupal 8 as oh. about three weeks ago. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. Never ever call render yourself. Uh, just return the render array from the controller, it will get taken care of because render throws away all the Ajax you just had. Oh, it does it? Yeah. So don't do that. Just return the render array. See, I told you guys not to trust my Drupal code. <laughs> there were two. Was there one more? Or is that? Yeah, that, that was the, the Those are the two. All right. Yeah. That's actually not too bad. I would accept that as declining my pull request with those comments. Definitely. Yeah, the rest of the clients, those two are particular problems. That's what I get for writing this code at like 1.30 in the morning the other day. Um, any other questions or comments? Any other bug reports? No? So you guys are great. Um, I have, like I said, I have stickers. Um, or if you want to talk more about Ajax stuff or Drupal or Doctor Who or beer or anything, I'm around for the conference. I'm on time. Yeah. All right, cool. Thanks, guys.